Our guest this evening is Joseph Tarfimo. Joe is a Somerville resident. He's been living in Somerville for how many years now, Joe? 50 plus. 50 plus years. Joe has a very interesting story. Joe, tell us how your story began. Well, I was born in 1936 in Esek, Yugoslavia, which nowadays is called Croatia. And uh, lived there till about 1943, 1944. Uh, uh, that would have been about the time after the Germans invaded Yugoslavia. Now, I'm not sure if my parents did it voluntary or if it was mandatory, but we used to have German soldiers come to dinner on Sundays, and they would say, tell us that we should go to Dresden because Dresden would be safe, it wouldn't be bombed, and we could come back in six months. So they advised you to do that for they your did, safety? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, my mother and myself packed up we're headed for Yugoslavia, uh, for Dresden, okay, by train through Hungary, uh, Poland, uh, Prague, and ended up in Dresden. Yeah. My my real father stayed behind. He, you had a business. Did he have he a business? He had a business. There? He was a he was what the Germans would call a Tischler, or furniture maker. Furniture maker. And him and our next door neighbor were in the business. And my mother would do the high gloss polishing that they you see on European furniture and the gold inlay, you know. Oh. So anyway, he stayed behind to do the business while we went here. And uh, where did you stay when you first went to, to Dresden? Dresden? Mm -hmm. We we were what I would say was a converted school, okay. uh, which consisted of three buildings. We were in one building and. Uh, there was an adjacent building, and they were the uh, the three buildings were close to the railroad station. Here, so uh, other families were in those buildings. Oh as well. yes, yeah. uh, during no, those times, Dresden was heavily populated by refugees, okay, because they were coming to escape uh, the Russians, which were starting to move into Germany. You know, they was trying to get away, come out of the eastern. Eastern Europe, and you know, so you know, so they uh, they uh, it, it said that Dresden almost doubled in its population. Wow! When it were uh, and when it was being bombed, it they actually had no idea what the actual uh, population of Dresden was. Okay? Right, because yeah. people fled in there. Uh, and yeah, right, right, right. So you were in that first school building and. Yeah. Uh, uh, usually, we wouldn't, w when they had an air raid uh, uh, drill, okay, usually we wouldn't go down into the cellar. Okay. Okay. But on, on February 13th of 1945, my mother decided that she'd take her meager belongings and we would go downstairs. So during the first uh, air raid, our building got hit, mm -hmm. so we left the building. But you were in the you were in the basement, and so we were safe. We were safe. The it was an angel on your mother's shoulder. Yeah, maybe, he maybe. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, when we came out, we noticed that the building was uh, burning and you know partially damaged. So we decided to go into the next building. And uh, the air raid came again. Then that building got hit. So, coming out, we rested for the rest of the night. We stayed against the wall that divided our that divided our complex from the railroad station. So you huddled against the wall. Huddled against the wall. It was raining. It was windy, and uh, you know, so we stayed there. Mm. Uh, the following morning, we walked uh, toward the outskirts of Dresden. Uh, we walked over. So th this was after the bombing. So after there was the some bombing. devastation that you witnessed. Right, right, right. Uh, At that time. I mean, how walk. old were you then, Joe? 
I was about eight years old. About eight. eight. Yeah, so. Mm. So we walked uh, over dead bodies and, uh, you know, damaged uh, buildings, damaged bridges, and to their outskirts. And one thing that always I could never forget was the strong smell of human flesh burning. Mm. Very sickly, very sweet, you know. That's something that I could never forget. I can yeah. just imagine. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, we walked toward the outskirts. Uh, got on, I, I was lifted onto a truck and my mother was almost left behind until somebody picked her up and put her on there. From there we went to a uh, small farm, mm -hmm. small farm village where we stayed for maybe two weeks. And uh, the farmers would, we slept on the floor, straw on the floor, okay. They took you in anywhere they, they could. They took us in. Yeah. And they, they would share whatever they had, okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's uh, kind of an odd situation. My mother went back to Dresden for uh, a couple of times to see if she could salvage anything, you know. But every time she came back, the only thing that she could talk about was that she could hear people yelling in the mm -hmm. cellars for help and, you know, because Dresden was being bombed for several days. Okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, the English would bomb it and the Americans would come and bomb and, you know, so, so go back and forth. So anyway, after our stay at the, that village, we got onto a train and we headed to Austria. To Austria. Yeah. So anyway, we, uh, we uh, again ended up in a school. Again in a school. Yeah. Seemed to be a place of shelter. It was a sh place of shelter. It was convenient for them, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, uh, from there, we uh, went to a farm because the, the, the farm, the woman that was operating the farm needed help. It was her two daughters and a younger son. Her husband was in the military, so he wasn't there. So we stayed at that farm for, for I don't know, a couple of years, you know. So you helped them with the chores? I helped them with the chores, the field work, the maintaining the, the, the animals and the stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Again, it was on a share what you have. Right. Right? So you basically lived with that family. You yes, all lived yes, together yeah. as one we family? We all lived together, yeah. yeah. That's wonderful when you think yeah. of it. Yeah, well, you know, you know, what did they say? One hand washes the other? For sure. Right? Uh, one of the interesting things was that my mother had a little stove built from uh, tin boxes. We used to get uh, like uh, Red Cross assistance, you know, oh. uh, relief packages. Okay? Mm -hmm. And they would come in a, uh, what now you'd call a five gallon tin, you know. Okay. So she had several and somebody, so, uh, somebody built her a little stove, it was about like this, you know, like that. And uh, Out of these tin boxes? Out of the tin boxes, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, and the wood that we used was about like this long, you know, <laughs> yeah. And what she would use it for is she liked to bake. Okay. There was an oven in the stove? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, she liked to bake, so she would bake, and uh, uh, we would share that with the farm family, and they would share what they had with us, and so on, you know? Yeah. yeah. So How we long were you with that family? Uh, a couple of years, I would say. Really? Yeah. A couple yeah. of years? Yeah. So, and then w what was your next adventure? The next adventure we got a little bit more room. We were moved from uh, from uh, to the first farm, uh, farm that we were in. Uh, the village was called Frauheim, ladies' village, mm -hmm. <laughs> all right? Then we moved to another vill uh, village, but we had like a an Austrian duplex, <laughs> all right? It's wooden building side by side. Okay. There we'd have a little garden. It would have a, a stove in there. Uh, we had the, the kitchen was downstairs and a room upstairs, 
and there was an uh, area where we could have animals. So did, did your mother work at this time? Oh, always working on farms. On farms? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To help out, you know? Yes. Uh, so we had uh, a little place where we could have chickens, rabbits, you know. So you could have some of your own livestock to live, right, live right, off right, of as well. Right. Couldn't have cows or anything right. large, but we could have small stuff. Right. Okay. And the funny part about that place was that the floor was wood mm -hmm. and the ceiling was wood. So one Christmas we went out into the, into the forest, cut down a tree, dragged it home, took it upstairs, nailed it to the floor, and nailed it to the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't we, fall for sure. It didn't fall, right. yeah. And uh, well, the decorations were cookies, nuts that we painted, fruit, you know, and stuff like that. Well, uh, when we left that village, it was in May, but the Christmas tree was still up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. That was for the next people to take down, that right? That was for the next people to take down, right. Mm -hmm. And where'd you go from there? We went to Reed, Austria, which was the first camp. Okay. First camp. It, it was done by a uh, run by a refugee an, camp. A refugee camp, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it was run by an organization called the uh, uh, International Relief Association. Mm -hmm. And so they gave you food and shelter there? Well, yeah, right. Did, did your mother well, work there as well? Uh, my mother worked in the kitchen. Okay. That's where she met my stepfather. Okay. Okay. She worked in the, he, she worked in the kitchen. He was uh, going around from farm to farm, picking up produce with the horse and buggy, mm -hmm. yeah, picking up milk, produce, bread, stuff like that, you know, for the camp, you uh -huh. know. Uh, a lot of it was subsidized by relief organizations, you know. and we uh, we were living in what uh, what were wooden barracks, you know. Yes. Uh, military housing. Yeah. 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 So you know. Yeah. So for how long did you stay at that camp? Roughly. That was kind of a, uh, a transit camp because we'd come uh, be be there for a couple of months leave, go to another camp, come back, okay? And that was in the process of uh, documentation, uh, physicals, and so on, in, in preparation to come here. In preparation to come so to the United States. So maybe we stayed, I went to school there too, okay? Oh, you did? Yeah, mm -hmm. but didn't, uh, didn't learn English there. No. No, no. Okay. Where did you learn English? Uh, that would have been at the next camp. Okay? At the next yeah. camp. So, so anyway. you went to how many camps altogether? Uh, we went to four as a total. Four. Okay, yeah. So that was the first camp. And that then was you the went first camp. That was in Reed, Austria. Uh -huh. okay. All right. uh, uh, and from there we went, we were still in Austria, but outside of Linz. Okay. Uh, the camp was called Wegscheid. Okay, again, previously a military camp, larger, more people, it was uh, head of churches and everything else, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, again, transit camp, you know. Uh, my mother still worked in the kitchen. He, uh, he did... He, your stepfather? Yeah, my stepfather. He did kind of maintenance work and helping out here, helping out there, you know. So uh, you, the three of you then moved as a unit? We were moving as a unit, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That was after they got married, you know, so. And they got married at that first camp when they, they met? They got married in Reed, yeah. Hmm. So anyway, uh, in, uh, in the second camp, that's where I started to learn English. The only problem was, it wasn't the, prob it wasn't the English for here. What was it in English for? It was... The Queen's English. The Queen's English. <laughs> yeah, it got me into trouble when we came here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, prior to that, you spoke German? I spoke German. And? I spoke uh, Croatian. And uh, that was my two languages okay, at right. that point. Okay. Right. After my parents, uh, my mother got married, I also learned Russian because wow. my stepfather was Russian. Uh, there you go. Yeah. 
So he, he was uh, he was a prisoner of war. He was captured by the Germans. Okay, uh -huh. so that's how he ended up in in Austria. Okay. Right? So anyway. So, so then you went off to Camp Three. Well, it took a little time. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we, uh, you know it may have taken uh, maybe a year. Mm -hmm. okay? Uh, so, yeah. Then we went from there, we went to number three. Okay. That, was, that camp was called Hellbrunn. Uh, and that was in Salzburg, Austria. Still and in Austria. Oh, so we were still in Austria, right, yeah. And uh, sometimes we'd go back to Linz and go back to Salzburg back to Linz, back to Salzburg, you know, uh, because you were doing paperwork and you'd get to one place and they'd say, you don't have the right paperwork, you gotta go back, you know, yeah. right? Yeah. It's not like now. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. How long were you at the third camp? Um, uh, about a year, maybe a little longer. Another year. Since, uh, I would say anywhere between 19, 1947 to 1951, between the three, uh, three four camps. Okay? I see. Right. So then yeah. you went to the fourth camp. We went to the fourth camp, which was Bremen, mm -hmm. Bremerhaven in Germany. Uh -huh. right? Again, the same story. Back you don't have this, you don't go, go back. Uh, so yeah. uh, from Bremerhaven, we... Uh, we came here by boat. Okay. By boat, and where did you land in the United uh, States? We landed outside. We landed in New York. In okay. New York, yeah. Yeah, and we uh, uh, we from New York. The same day that we landed in New York, we took a train and went to Baldwinville, which is outside of Gardner. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and stayed there till. Uh, now, uh, we got there, we got into New York September 23rd, 1951. And we left the, the place in Gardner, Thanksgiving Day, 1951. Had no idea what Thanksgiving was, okay? Oh, All right, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, okay, so. Yeah. Whole different custom. Yeah. So anyway, we uh, came into Boston, mm -hmm. into South Station. He, my stepfather was already here. He was, he was already working at the Mass General. Okay. He came ahead of you. He came ahead of us. Oh, yeah. I see. He got a job. Okay. Yeah. Did he get so a place to live as well? He got. He had a place to live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he came. He came ahead of us, and then we came. And we came Thanksgiving Day, not knowing anything about what it's like over here. And we ended up in East Cambridge on Jefferson Street. So, well, now we have an apartment. We have to find some food, right? So, uh, on Jefferson Street, on the corner of Jefferson and Warren Street, if you're familiar with it. I'm not, but. Okay. Used to, you, there was a little grocery store. Mm -hmm. That was open, so we went down there. Uh, but did you have um, the currency that you needed? We had ten dollars. All right, we were rich. Yeah, <laughs> we were rich. <laughs> yeah. But they, had they given you that at the camp or they, in New they York? They gave or? it to us. They gave it to us at uh, uh, at the place outside of Gardner. I see. Yeah. Yeah. And so you know. Eh. And your stepfather was already here making wages he, with... Yeah, he already paid yeah. for the rent and stuff like that, you know. Right. Yeah. And uh, so... How old were you at this time, about? I was uh, 15. You were 15. Yeah. And then did you go to work? Oh, yes. Yeah. What did uh, you do? Uh, I started to work. We, uh, it was a strange thing because uh, there was a Russian priest... Mm -hmm. Okay, an Orthodox priest, and he got 
a job for myself and my mother at a at a place on Beacon Street, uh, on Park Street, okay, okay, which was called Nine. Uh, it was called uh, Beacon Hill Dairy, Nine Park Street, right down from City Hall, from uh, from uh, the Capitol. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. So we got a job there, and you know why the priest got the job? So he could come there and have lunch every day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a method to his madness. The free lunch. <laughs> right, a method yeah. to his madness. So yeah. from there, um, then did you get another job? Yeah, I went to the Mass General. And worked with your stepfather? I worked with the stepfather uh, doing floors, you know. Mm -hmm. Maintenance. Clean, washing okay. floors and cleaning them and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. And then what? And then I left there and went to Morgan Memorial. Morgan Memorial. Yeah. yeah. But, you know. What did you but, do? But I got to tell you. Yes. When we lived on Jefferson Street. Yes. Uh, we walked from Jefferson Street to Nine Park Street. Which A good was walk. The West End at that time, you know. Mm. Yeah. Walked through the Capitol building down the hill because First of all, we didn't have the money to pay for the tea. Right. Second, we didn't know how to use it. <laughs> oh, true. And that was a whole different system. I don't yeah. know if we know how to use it today. Yeah, yeah. But so then, um, what happened at Morgan Memorial? Well, I worked there for a couple of years, okay? Mm -hmm. Then uh, uh, went to school to learn uh, electronics. Got a job uh, at a place in Brighton called but they were making what at that time was called the community antenna, mm -hmm. okay, which was uh, they put up a uh, huge antenna somewhere with cables and run the cables down to to the cities and into your house, okay. And so I uh, decided to go and visit uh, some of my friends at uh, Morg Memorial, and there was this young lady there. And the, the, uh, my friend says, why don't you take her out? Why don't you take her out? Take her out for lunch, okay? So I did. That's how I met my wife. Your wife? Yeah. Peggy. Peggy or Margaret, but, <laughs> you know, right, yeah. She liked Peggy. She yeah. liked Peggy. And I called her my secondhand rose. Secondhand <laughs> rose. Appropriate for Morgan Memorial, Right, yes? right, yeah. right. So, and you got uh, married? We got married in 1960. And had a family? Had a f two boys, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were all, all raised in Somerville, went to St. Joe's, you know, yeah. then to St. Mary's in Cambridge, uh, yeah. And then you told me that you went to, uh, you got a job at Honeywell? and I got a job at, well, uh, between Morg Memorial, there were some other jobs, okay. Mm -hmm. There was a place in, uh, right uh, on Charles Street in Cambridge, and they were making equipment that would take the newspaper uh, Print uh, in those days, the uh, they would newspapers would do their print in hot lead, but this company would uh, had a process where they could do it on film. Okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, the danger of the hot lead wouldn't be there. Uh -huh. From there, I got laid off. Uh, that seems to be this my story. <laughs> <laughs> but you kept moving yeah. on the line, up the uh, line. Yeah, uh, uh, and I got laid off. And I got hired by Honeywell uh, three months before we got married. Oh, great. Right? So, yeah. And how long did you work for Honeywell? I worked for Honeywell for 35 years. 35 years. Yeah. And then you told me that you were laid off from Honeywell. Yeah, it, yeah, can you tell us how old you were when you got laid off from 60. Honeywell? You were 60. Yeah. But you didn't retire. No. You no. took another job. Well, from uh, at Honeywell, I went from working on a bench uh, to uh, incoming and receiving, you know, which is testing, to package test, to, uh, to uh, field service. And my last job was as product safety engineer for Honeywell, for their computer division. Mm. So, and you worked there for how long? 35 years. For Honeywell, but yeah. then you left Honeywell when you got laid yeah, off right. and you worked again. You went to work I went to, to work for a German test house. 
How appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where we spoke Jinglish. Ah, there you go. <laughs> and so let's uh, move it a little bit forward. And you, okay. you um, worked there for how long? Ten years. Ten years. Yeah. But during this time, your wife got ill? Uh, my wife got ill in 2000, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, they went through, she went through all the, uh, the procedures and uh, uh, the breast removal, you know, and stuff. She had breast cancer. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So. And she uh, passed? Uh, she passed in 2008. Okay? 2008. But during her treatments, the, uh, she worked for the Secret Service. Yeah. Okay, at the yeah. end. Uh, during her treatments, the agents would come to the house, pick her up, take her for a treatment, bring her to work, bring her home, come back the next day, all over again. Wow. And the nurses and doctors will all be, be waiting at the, at the Beth Israel to see who the agent was that was bringing her. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. They were good to her. They were good to her, yeah. Right. And she her. loved the job. Okay. Yeah. She yeah. always said that they, they taught her uh, how to be respectful and, you know. Right. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So now you uh, are retired. You yeah. finally did retire. Well, I retired in uh, uh, 2008 after my wife passed away. Mm -hmm. See, so. And now you, you're living in Somerville. I still live in Somerville, yeah. still at the same house. Okay. Mm -hmm. But there was an interim period where between 1965 and 1970, we lived in Lowell because it was, uh, at that time I was working for Honeywell in Lowell. In Lowell. Mm -hmm. So it was a long ride, okay? Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. So we, and then uh, my stepfather got sick, my mother got older and you know, and we had responsibilities, so we moved back. To take care of them. Well, uh, also, uh, my, uh, my youngest son developed asthma uh -huh. and almost every Sunday we would be driving from Lowell coming down here having to take him to the hospital you know oh, so see. that was easier yeah. for us to, and we moved back and the su asthma subsided. Well how about that? Yeah. So now how do you spend, you're retired officially and how do you spend your days now? I putter around the house, work yeah. in the garden, uh, fix this I go to the elderly, okay, go on trips with them, you know. Through the Council on Aging? Council on Aging, mm -hmm. yeah. They do some pretty fancy trips sometimes, They huh? sure do, yeah. <laughs> yeah they, we, went to, uh, we went to Amish country for a couple of days. Wonderful. We were, we were supposed to go to New York for a couple of days, you know, so, Wonderful. yeah. yeah. So that's great. And you have a full life now, and you've had a full life. You made it all the way from uh, Germany through Austria to the U.S. One career, two careers, marriage, children. Mm -hmm. You've had a very full life and, and a lot of different experiences. And certainly we can see Joe's experience, his strength, and his hope, and our hope through that. We can be vital at any age, Joe. I want to thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story with us. You're quite welcome. <laughs>